This is one of my favorite kinds of videos to do, to be honest. This is going to be another before, during, and after on a property renovation here in Tucson. This was a small house on a very large lot. And while we could have probably added all kinds of square footage and things like that, it was simply for two people. So we decided instead to keep the footprint as it was. The only things dramatic that we did, and trust me, the drama cannot be overstated for this little tiny property, we took out the wall that divided the living room from the eating kitchen and we tore out the eight foot ceilings and simply went up into the rafters, insulated and um, drywalled those and created a gambrel ceiling. So a gambrel ceiling is a French style ceiling. And instead of coming to a peak, like a chateau roof, this has a, a line that goes straight across and comes down. So the roof itself on the outside didn't change the roof line, the integrity of the roof, but on the inside, the ceiling became this lovely up and across and down, which elevated everything in that little tiny space and made it feel so much more spacious, which is kind of one of those design tricks. If you can't create more square footage, create volume. It helps so that you don't feel like you're under the little low ceiling, but it also helps so that sound moves differently through the house, light moves differently through the house, and it has much more of a presence when you open the front door. So you're gonna see what that looks like, the original low eight foot ceiling, and then the gambrel ceiling going up to, at, at the highest point, I think it's 13 feet. So, um, the other thing that we did was to all new finishes throughout the house. So flooring, um, of course, countertops and cabinetry and things like that. But the combination of more light in the house and more volume in the house, and then a floor that reflects light created an amazing, warm, welcoming, and extremely homey space but it also gave the sense that the house was twice the size. And I'm gonna point out a couple of little design tricks that I pulled to help increase that even more. Okay, so come on, let's go look at some pictures. Cute little brick house in a cute little neighborhood in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, all brick on the outside, old windows, bars on the windows, and 900 square feet with a small, small laundry room attached that didn't count until we put air conditioning in there. Original kitchen in the L shape. This is the eat-in kitchen looking into the living room. And this is the living room looking toward the bedrooms and the front door. And that's some really cute carpet. This was what was under the carpet. Once that carpet got ripped out, walls could start to be removed. This was such an important part of our um, immediate opening up of the house. What you're looking at is the front door entryway, but it opened really tight and there was a, a coat closet right there. So you can see the clash of the doors. You don't even have to imagine how awkward that was for the people who were there. So the first thing I wanted to do was take out that closet and it opened up the entryway to create an actual entryway. You'll also notice as you look toward the uh, hallway and you're looking into that second doorway, you'll see a register. That was where the HVAC system that was really, really old so that cl that closet that we took out in the entryway was then um, reclaimed by using that space and taking the heat out and putting on an efficient heat pump up on the roof. In a tiny house like this, you've got to have storage. So the wall comes out and um, begins the process of removing ceiling. That's a bunch of the old insulation coming out. And this is looking at that wall that we're looking at. So that's the dining room, kitchen area, 
and the living room. And now you can see just that amount of demo, how much it opens up. Then began tearing out all of the ceiling in the open area. And we didn't have to raise the roof, but we did have to put in a new beam and do quite a bit of shoring up to make sure that the roof was um, stabilized and that because that was a load-bearing wall that came out. So this is what it looks like from that flat eight foot ceiling to a much, much higher, uh, I think 13 feet if I recall correctly. Those are new trusses going in to support the new beam. And we wanted to create um, pot ledges all around that area. So there was quite a bit more uh, reinforcement that had to be done but you can see the beginnings of shelving it was actually a ledge that I had built in there so that pots and art and all could be um, safely displayed but not have to be down on the floor taking up footprint this is as we're getting the, the house drywalled and cleaned can lights all the way um, through, and um, a skylight that not only opens and allows airflow and heat out of the kitchen, but also has a shade in it. At this point, we are completely drywalled. We didn't actually touch the bedrooms, so that wasn't a problem. Those just got freshened up, painted with new flooring, but the, the cozy Great room and kitchen is almost done at this point as far as construction goes. And you can see that closet back there that we reclaimed. New front door with leaded glass facing the south. Pot lights throughout, even up on the pot ledges and underneath them to shine down on artwork. And this is what the skeleton of those um, pot ledges looks like. They're just built out and then um, drywalled and mudded. And then they have the same exact tile that's on the floor through the house um, up on the top so that they were easy to wipe, easy to clean, and I, I could have plants up there. Or the, the um, tenant could have all kinds of plants. The wall for the new kitchen. Tearing out the old closets in both of the small bedrooms. They were so tiny you could hardly get into them. And all we did was open them up so that the whole closet was visible and accessible and then trimmed out and painted. But it made such a difference in storage to be able to see everything. This is the old skylight that was in the kitchen. And this is the new skylight. Once we started getting paint on the walls, things were so much better. Always remember to put in your electrical in the floor if you're going to have an island. This is the beautiful new front door. And this is the beginning of the flooring in the house. I chose a um, 18 by 18 ceramic tile that looks quite a bit like travertine. This is a major, major design trick right here. The tile got laid on the diagonal from the front door to the eat-in kitchen. It makes the eye go all the way across the floor. It makes the house look elongated and wider. And I am a believer that if you're going to have a small space, you should include as much design zazazu as you can and so not only was the floor laid on the diagonal but there was a straight border cut and laid along the walls all the way through the house so that that beautiful um, sea of tile that was drifting was creating design everywhere you looked custom made mosaic that I designed and there it is um, laid out and there it is, grouted and finished. That was what you opened up into in the entryway. And so let's talk about this color because this is a bold color. This color was specifically chosen because outside, the beautiful 
bird of paradise that was um, just a riot of color outside was the inspiration for this this color. So bringing the exterior in is a way to make the house larger and cohesive. That little entryway then moves the eye diagonally across to the eat-in kitchen. So your eye doesn't stop somewhere and say, oh, a new color. Instead, you flow through. That's a design trick to keep your eye moving in a small space. All new cabinetry from Ikea in white to help keep everything as light and bright as possible. The walls are done in two different tones of khaki. One is has a slight violet and one has a slight yellow. So what it does is create a lot of overlap and shadow as the light moves through the house. Doggy door for that cute little black dog you saw. Creating space by blocking the color so the kitchen ends and the eat-in dining area begins where that color is. Keeping everything else in a soft, neutral um, palette of white and the butcher block countertops add quite a bit of warmth, but they also add a whole lot of sound quality because you have all that hard surface, including all that tile. So you need to soften it and baffle sound. And wood is a really good way to do that. I tried to add light at every opportunity, under the pot ledges, above the pot ledges, under the, the counters. Um, inside the cabinetry, there's lighting where the glass doors are. In the front of the island, there's um, a lit uh, lit space for display. Moving light in a small space is one of the ways that you soften edges, create coziness, and especially if you have hard surfaces like appliances and tile and all, then light becomes essential as you move through the space. I designed this and built this island completely out of IKEA cabinetry. The um, front here is actually an upper cabinet that will have glass doors. The back is a base unit, and then the edges all the way around are floating shelves. Building that on a little pedestal, remember we put that electricity underneath it, so there, were, there was plenty of electrical space um, for lighting and for an outlet in the island itself. The bathroom was really bizarre. They had lined the floor, ceiling, and walls in cultured marble. It had a huge leaking skylight, so everything got torn out of there. A new niche was built, and I wanted a very um, simple and warm tile, and I wanted it all the way up the wall and the ceiling, so the whole entire shower enclosure became spa-like. The floor tile in the bathroom was not the same simply because it was so slippery, so you have to have something in there that has a little more texture, but overall, the color flowed from the rest of the house right into the bathroom. New windows all the way through the house, and those are custom designed up down shades so that for privacy, that's that closet that we reclaimed. There it is with its new door. Little hallway, and as much storage as a person could want in a tiny little house like this. The little tiny laundry room 
that was not very useful, but it got a coat of paint, it got some storage, and the washer and dryer fit beautifully. Custom lighting, I can't stress it enough. Dim your lights and change out anything that doesn't kind of fit the flow. This was in the entryway. Um, eyeball lights that will go and look at artwork. Custom made light for the dining area. Spotlights from Ikea to a spotlight plants and artwork. Everything flows and has a very well-lit and extremely cozy feel. The outside became the last project to work on. Using bricks, we uh, covered the um, cement. We widened the walk so it wasn't quite so scary. And lots and lots of desert plants and some um, desert elements like rocks and tiny saguaros and things like that were implemented so that the house felt like it belonged here in the desert instead of the very strange array of plastic flowers that they had had. Brand new mailbox. And a custom fountain for the back patio. This became a nice place to sit and have coffee, have a cup of tea. Amazing what some water can do on some of these plants. What had been parched earth became an oasis. <laughs> 